Hello YouTubers, Duke Kaidai. Today I am now going to do my rankings on probably like my favourite era of the whole show of both the, uh, the original series and the modern series and that of course is the Tom Baker era of the show. Now as you know, Tom Baker had over at least, had over seven seasons, seven seasons as he did the show for seven years and seven seasons and over 180 episodes and that includes He's debut scene from Planet Spies Part 6, all cancelled six parts of Sharda, and the opening sequence from Castrovella Part 1. And, and to this day, he still remains the longest serving Doctor to this date. And I don't think anyone would beat his record anytime soon. So, let's begin with... So, let's begin... Yeah. So at number seven we have season seventeen. Um, there's not now as you know I consider this to be Tom Baker's most weakest season. Weakest season. I know it's been released on Blu-ray, and I think the quality has made it better. But I just consider it the most weakest season, in my opinion. Like his weakest season in the whole show, and I consider it one of the weakest classic series seasons in the or original series. Look, I love Destiny and Daleks. I would watch that story every now and again. I have such nostalgic vibe feelings for that story. I think it's a great story. It's really underrated and unappreciated. It's not as good as Genesis of the Daleks, but it's still a pretty decent Dalek story. Um, City of Death, which is the strongest story of, in my opinion, of, of this season. I love the locations, how it's set in France and... And the City of Death is the most highest rated uh, episode of Doctor Who in the whole show, with part four reaching up to 16.10 million views in the UK, making it the most highest rated episode in record. I don't think any episode would beat that episode's record anytime soon, but that was due to IDV going on strike. And the City of Death is a fantastic story. I love the soundtrack it had. Derby Simpson did such a fantastic job with it. So yeah, Creature from the Pit is okay. I thought that that scene where he's kissing that green blob's genital area was a bit inappropriate. They should have had that scene cut out a bit too much. Um, Tom, they should have cut that out. Um, but overall, Creature from the Pit, it's an okay story. Not one of the best Tom Baker stories. No, really, again, another okay story. I have nothing really much to say about them. I do like the design of the Edians. I would really love them to come back. But again, they were just the story. It's just a really okay story. Again, not one of the best Tom Baker stories. Horns and Iron is probably like the worst Tom Baker story of all time. People say it's Underworld. People say it's the Stones of Blood. But for me, it was Horns and Iron. That is a that was a really shit story. I just want to go. Don't want to go on about it. Um, the Nymons are basically like the only good thing about that story. <laughs> and then we have Shada. I'm so glad this is a fantastic story. The Anna, what the animation, completing the, the animation for that story was really well done. And uh, after I watched it on DVD as a full length movie, and then when they brought season 17 on Blu ray, you have the option of watching it in its original six parts, which makes finally completing the Tomba Gear of the show. That shows you that he had a total of 42 stories, and yep, yeah, I'm so glad that's finally completed. And if it, if I, if it, if they, if the story was finished, I'd probably say that would be the last story for both Graham Williams, Derby Simpson, as that story would have marked an ending of an era. And it would be the first story to have all its parts air in the 1980s. So, yeah. Charlotte is a fantastic story. I probably like I consider that the best story, the second best story of that season. Um, so far this season seventeen is okay, not the best, not the best of any means of any means. Um, Destiny of Daleks, City of Death, and Charlotte are the only strong points of that team, but the rest of the stories are just completely forgetful. Forgetful. So uh, number six we have season fifteen. I think this season is a lot more better than season 17. Like, this is basically Graham Williams' first season as producer. Horror. 
Horror Fang Rock. Fantastic story. Love it. It's dark. It's gritty. I found it... I love it. I love the Roton. It was pretty funny when the the fourth Doctor threw a cigarette butt at that at that Roton creature calling... The, I just loved how it screened it like it went... Ah! It reminded me of Davros a bit. I'm so glad that this season's getting released on Blurry. And I just love when I saw the trailer for it showing the Roton, what the Roton looks like in... In CGI form, it looks really well done. Really well done. Overall, Horror Fang Rock is a really fantastic story. I would watch that story again and again. It does so well for a post Philip Hinchcliffe story. Then we have The Invisible Enemy, which is. I find that story to be really underrated and unappreciated. I, it was such a great start for K9, who was like one of the most iconic classic series companions of all time. Um, so yeah, the Shrimp Virus is such an underrated, appreciated monster villain, and I just love its design, it looks so unique. I'd love to see them bring back the Shrimp Virus someday. So yeah, Invisible Enemy, another great story, does so well for a post-Hinchcliffe post of Hinchcliffe story. And it, I think that story deserves more, more appreciation than it gets, it's really underrated and unappreciated. Image of Fendel, fantastic story. I consider this probably the second best story of this season. The Fandula is a fantastic, really well done. It does so well for a post Philip Hinchcliffe story. It does so well for post Hinchcliffe story. It really gives you that post Philip Hinchcliffe life. I feel like this would be the last really dark horror story where it gives me shivers down my spine. Until, like, Megalor, I think until, like, I think until, like, State of Decay, I believe. Hey, for the role, I've... <laughs> and we got the Sunmakers, which is a pretty good story, but that's when I feel like where season 15 is starting to go down. So it's still a pretty good story. It really drags a bit around part four, and I feel like the Sunmakers should have been a five-parter at least. It would have made it a little bit better. Oh, well, I do like the villain in it, but he just... I think he's good, but he's not the best. I just feel like he's a bit of a, rip, a Davros rip-off. And then we got Underworld. Again, it's okay. I don't think it deserves all the hate it gets. It often considers one of the worst stories, but for me, I consider it just an okay story. Again, it's not one of the best Tom Baker stories of all time. Then we got The Invasion of Time. Again, another okay story. Um, not one of the best, and not one of the best Tom Baker stories. I, f I feel like the, the Sultanans were just shooting Horned in for no reason at all. I f the plot is so confusing, and I feel like they should have killed Leela Ruff. I think that would have been a great send-off to her character. Oh, well, what can you do? I feel like it was a really disappointing final, but the story's okay, not all that great. So we're all like, season 15, like, really started off great, but then it just all went downhill, like, really went disappointing. And at number five, we have season 16, the key to time season. I think this season is really underrated and really unappreciated. I really, I think season 16 is so much better than season 17, but that's just my opinion. I really like it. Like, it's really everything you want. It's fun. It's action-packed. It's really what, what it could have... Yeah, and I think it's probably like Graham Leland's best season as producer. I feel like he's producing wise as producer was really at peak in that season. So yeah. Um I really enjoyed the Rival Serration. It's a really good story, really great start to the key to time. I love the white guy and how he's dressed like like some businessman. Uh the Pirate Prelate, really underrated story. I think that story deserves more appreciation than it gets. I love the design for the Pirate Lord, how he's like half human, half cyborg. I just love how his arm looks, and I just love that robot parrot. I just love the battle against the robot parrot and canine. How canine just, like, basically snitched it, or basically snarled it. Like, basically killed it, I meant to say. Sons of Blood, it's a pretty bad story. Not one of the best. It does have its good moments. The gold dust creatures don't make any sense. Look, I don't think... Although it's not as bad as the Horns of Nine on any means, but... 
but still pretty bad. I think on the Androids of Tower, fantastic story. I probably consider this the best story of this season. And, yep, it's a really strong season where it left off. Really strong story. I would watch that story again and again. Again and again. It's a fantastic story. Then we got Paracol. A really underrated, underappreciated story. I just love that story. Like, Corol being this, like, octopus squid-like creature. I guess because I had such a fondness for octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish. As I just love cephalopods. They are such fantastic creatures. Paracol is a really... I, f I really enjoyed it. Sorry, I would watch that story again. It's a really underrated, really under unappreciated story. I think it deserves more appreciation than it gets. So hopefully for the Blu-ray release, if it gets a Blu-ray release, I can. S I think it will... Crow will look so brilliant in Blu-ray quality. And I think they have that option. So I really hope that season... I f honestly feel like season 16 could be the next season after season 15 to be released on Blu-ray, or it could be season 13, I really don't know. But either way, I feel like scene 13 and scene 16 will probably most likely be the last two Tom Baker seasons to be released on Blu-ray. Okay, and um, then we got Armageddon Factor. Good final, not the best, but we really enjoyed it. The Black Guardian's really terrifying. I'm so glad they brought him back for the Peter Dace near the show. And he's still even terrifying, even in the Peter... Davis and Nero the show, like he comes across as really intimidating and threatening, such a fantastic villain, I really would love to see both the White and Black Guardians, Black Guardians return for the modern series some days, like who knows, so overall like season 16 is a really good season, it's really underrated and really underappreciated, it's a fun season, fun season, and I really enjoy it. At number four, we have season 18. This is another really underrated season for this era. I don't get why people hate this season. They consider it like Tom Baker's weaker season and, and that Tom Baker looks really tired and worn out. Yes, Tom Baker does look a bit tired and worn out at that point, but overall, I actually really like this season. I grew up with this season. I have a lot of nostalgic vibes for this season. This was like the first um, Tom Baker season I f finished watching on DVD, and I have a lot of love for this season, it's a fun season, it's dark, it's action-packed, I feel like John Nathan Turner was really trying to go back to more of the Phil of Hinchcliffe and Barry Lutz and Terran Dick's era of the show. I'm so glad this season got released on Blu-ray, and I can see that a lot of people are starting to really appreciate a lot of the earlier giant, like the early, the earlier John Nathan Turner seasons, now, like, I'm seeing them, they're starting to really appreciate season 20 a lot more as well. And it doesn't deserve, this season doesn't deserve all the hate it gets. The Leisure Hive is okay. Not Again, not one of the best Tom Baker stories. I consider that a miss. I would only watch it in a marathon. Megalos, fantastic story. Tom Baker's acting trial is both the fourth Doctor and Megalos is really superb and spot on. <laughs> Full Circle, great story, I love it. This is like... Uh, the Mushed Men are such fantastic monster-like creatures. And I love how it was a great debut to Atrick, who is such an underrated, unappreciated companion. He works so well with Tom Baker in this season. Like, the more... The father and son bonding. So, yeah. said so, okay, fantastic story. One of the best stories from this season. I just love the vampire gothic horrors to it. Um, I just love it, like, how the, how the fourth Doctor and Romana get attacked by bats. So, yeah, uh, so, yeah, oh, also on a side note, in productions of Full Circle, K-9 was originally supposed, uh, to be killed off around halfway through this season, which caused a lot of conflicts between Tom Baker and John Ethan Turner, and I can see why... And then we have Warrior's Gate, probably like the weakest story out of the EA Space Trilogy, but it's still a really good story. Not one of the best, but best, but I would, it's really dark and horrific, and I just like how it, it was like beginning to foreshadow the fourth Doctor's regeneration, like you could tell that something was going on, like the, that creature, the white creature figure who acted, creature guy acting like a coming to the fourth doctor after after he was thrown like 
right on the ground and coming to him to get him back on his feet. You could tell that that was like really foreshadowing. When I watched it, it felt like it was really foreshadowing. The fourth Doctor's like regeneration. Generation like... And now honestly, this season had a lot of foreshadowing going on with the fourth Doctor's regeneration. So yeah... I think we have Keeper Truck and probably like the best story of the season. I just love it. It's it's nice to see the Master come back. Jeffrey Beavers does such a fantastic job as the Master. Um, it was a nice debut for for Nessa as well. I love it. Keeper Truck is a really dark horror story, and I consider it one, it is one like one of my favorite Tom Baker stories of all time. I can, and yeah, and. You can really can see that. I just love it, like the going for the real dark and horrific. It's fantastic. Sorry, I would really watch it again and again. Fantastic story. And then we got Logopolis. I think it's a fantastic closure for Tom Baker's Doctor. I know that story had a lot of mixed opinions, like saying, "Oh, it's it's not that great." Oh, it is great. But again, I think a lot of people like me just. I just don't think anyone knew how long Tom Baker was going to stay. Whether he was going to do the show for either 8 years or 10 years or even 20 years, we don't know. So yeah. I f but if in my opinion, it was a fantastic closure to Tom Baker's Doctor. He and Anthony Allen worked so well together. Anthony Allen, it was such a fantastic debut to Anthony Allen as the master. And, thus, and such a great debut to, to Tegan. Although I found her really annoying in that story. And she was even annoying in season 19. But she does get more likeable around season 20. In my opinion. So yeah. Season 18 is a great season. and I find that to be a really underrated and underappreciated season. But I'm so glad it's getting more appreciation that it deserves. It deserves. So yeah. It really has such a Philip Hinchcliffe feeling to it. So yeah, so at number three, we have season 12. Fun season, I really love this season. Robot is such a great debut to Tom Baker's Doctor. I love him battling against this giant K1 robot. How does, and it's funny how this giant K1 robot grows to a Godzilla side and grabs Sarah Jane and puts her in a building. It, I think it was supposed to be a reference to Godzilla, no, to King Kong, I meant to say. <laughs> And it does so well for a post John Pertwee story. I think it was originally intended to be written for John Pertwee's Doctor. But oh well. It, as in behind the scenes, this story was filmed back to back with Plunder Spider. So yeah, there was a little bit of production vowels going on. So yeah. And then the Ark in Space, fantastic story, I love that, another one of my favourite Tom Baker stories of all time, the worm is such a fantastic creature, I really hope they bring that monster back for the modern series, it's, it's dark, horrific and all that stuff, and how that human mut was slowly mutating into the, into the, the wormian, then we got Sultana Experiment, another fantastic story, it does so well for a two part, the pacing's not too fast and not too slow, and like, so it's nice to see them give the Sultan, to see the Sultans come back for the season. They're just becoming really popular at that point. People consider Sultan Experiment to be really underrated, but I don't think so. It was really highly praised. It had a lot of merchandise to it. So yeah, fantastic story. Does so well for a two-parter. And then we got Genesis Alex, the best story of this season. I love it. It really acted like the prequel to the Daleks. And showing the... And sh it was a nice, fantastic debut to their creator, Davros. To their creator, Davros, who was a, such a fantastic villain. who's one of the most iconic uh, villains in the whole show. Then we got Revenge of the Simon, which is a really good story. Not one of the best, but... And not one of the best Simon stories. But, and the story's really underrated because it's overshadowed by stories like... The Ark in Space, or Tony Experiment, and Genesis of Daleks from the season. But... It, it still does really well. It's the only Simon story to air in the 1970s. The only nitpick I have with this story is that the Simons sound a bit way too human. I think they could have made them sound more robotic. 
but there was a lot of budget values going on there. So yeah, overall I love season 12. It's a fantastic season. And the chemistry, I really love. And, I, and it had one of the best Titus teams, like the fourth Doctor, Sarah Lane Smith and Harry Solomon. They work so well together. I really will watch that season over and over again. I, I really missed out getting that season on Blu-ray, but oh well, what can you do? And then at number two, we have season 13. Now, people can, a lot of fans consider this to be Tom Baker's best season, but I just consider it as his second best season. But I do have to agree, Tom Baker's acting portrayal is really getting better at here. Terror of the Zygons is such a fantastic debut uh, to, to season 13. It was originally intended to be the season 12 final, meant to be a six-parter, but I'm glad it became the opening for season 13. This would also be the Brigadier's last appearance until Mordred Undead of Peter Dayton's second season. Um, yeah. And I love the soundtrack. It really went for a different approach than the than the Derby Simpson soundtrack. Uh, Planet of Yule, which is a really underrated, unappreciated story. And I just love Tom Baker's costume in that, in that story. It acts like a mix between his season 12 and season 13 and 14 eye costume. Like with the orange crowd tying the bow, the titan waistcoat, and the red safari shooting jacket. It really was acting like a mix. I really would love to see that variant get released as an action figure someday, and I would love to cosplay that variant someday. Pyramids of Oz, fantastic story. The best story of that season. I love that story. I've been watching it so many times. Fantastic story. I love the Egyptian historical vibes to it. Sutek is a fantastic villain, and there's rumours going on that he will come back for the modern series. If it's true or not, I would love to come back. He's such a fantastic villain. He's just so intimidating, threatening, and terrifying. The story is really dark, and it's fun, action-packed, and terrifying. It does so well in pacing. So yeah, fantastic story. And also, that would be the last uh, story to be... To have that to be filmed in that unit house area where that, that house for the unit would be filmed in, so yeah. And then we got the Android, the Android Invasion. Great, a really good story, not one of the best, but really good. It's really underrated and unappreciated. Again, because it's overshadowed by stories like Terra Zygons, Pyramids of Mars, Brain Voice, and Seeds of Doom from this. From like Seeds of Death, no, Seeds of Doom from the story. But it does still do very well. It does still do pretty well for a post John Pertwee story. But again, it's still a fun story. Not one of the best, but it's definitely a really good story. I would watch every now and again if I'm in the mood. And this would be also would be Harry Sullivan's last appearance in the show. Uh, as his actor passed away from diabetes during the 1980s, so yeah. And then we got Brayden Moyes, a, a fantastic story, one of my favourite Tom Baker stories of all time. I love the graphic, the, gr the gothic horror themes to it. it, it's got such a Frankenstein feeling to it. Morbius is such a fantastic villain, how he's like, how he, tr and I love the, the mind battle against him and the fourth Doctor, how we see all these previous unknown incarnations existing before the first Doctor. Which, which was often, which would lead, which was, which would was foreshadowed quite a lot in the Peter Davison era, and the Sylvester Magoya, which would all be leading up. And I'm so glad what Chris Chibnall did making these Moist Doctors be part of a previous unknown life, of the do of the Doctor, of a different incarnation in life. Like what Chris Chibnall did, and I think, making a canyon, and I really like it, and it does work so well. Bringing that together, making a canyon now, and showing that they were just part of a previous unknown life, and they're not part of the original regeneration cycle. So yeah, Brady Moist, fantastic story, another one of my favourite Tom Baker stories of all time. See of Death, not a f fantastic story, I just love it. It does drag a bit around, around part two, but it gets really good around parts three to six. The Crunoid is a fantastic creature. I love it. I love it how it turns into this giant monstrous like plant-like creature and how they ex explode up and basically it just 
at that point, when I watched it, it just felt like the John Pertwee year had just faded out of that point. Until what was left of the John Pertwee year had completely faded out of that point. So yeah, it just made me feel sad that what was left of the of the John Pertwee year was just faded out. Disappeared at that point. But I will. Overall, season 13 is a fantastic season. I really like it. I consider it as Tom Baker's like second best season. I feel like he and Sarah, he and Sir, the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane work so well together as a best team. They acted like best friends and not like a couple at all. And then we head into number one, season forty. I love this season. I consider this to be Tom Baker's best season. Every story I think is really fantastic. Here, Musk and Drago, really underrated story. It's a fantastic story. I love how it's set in Italy. It does the pacing for it is so really well done. I've watched this story so many times. It's a fantastic story, a f- fantastic story. Such a fantastic start to season fourteen. Hand of Fear, not a fantastic story. Which this would also would be Sarah Jane's last appearance until the Five Doctors, and then and then she would come back in Dimensions Time, and then come back for School Reunion of David Tennant's first season. I just love Eldred. She's a fantastic. He, she's a fantastic villain. Transforming from woman to male. I just love how the ring was like possessing all these people saying Eldrad must live. And how the hand moves on it. It's really creepy. So yeah. Fantastic. Delhi Assassin. Probably like the darkest story from this season. Pete Brad does so well as the master. And that is like... I just love the design of the master in that story. It's having this really horribly disfigured incarnation of the master... I love it, and I love the narration Tom Baker gives for the credits. <laughs> and I love the battle in against in the Matrix scenes. That's another fantastic story. Tom Baker getting, uh, the fourth Doctor getting his l- legs stuck between a railway track, which was pretty messed up. I love everything about the Doctor and the he- the guy he was battling against with that giant eel that really gives shivers down my spine. Then we got Face of Eel, which is a really great story. Even though I consider it the weakest L of season 14, it's still a great story. Great start to Leela, who is one of the most iconic classic series companions from companions in the show. So yeah, great story. I, I love how it's another dark story, how this, compu- how this computer believed it was the Doctor. And having like a monument and had a psychological damage where it believed it was the Doctor. That's pretty messed up. And then having that childlike voice making it even more darker. And then we have Robots of Death. Fantastic story. I love that story. That's my favourite Tom Baker story of time. It's fun. It's dark. I love how you have these psychopathic killing robots that go on a killing spree. So yeah, it's a fan. I love it. DA4 is such a fan. I really love DA4. He's such a fantastic one-off companion. I really wish... I really hope they bring the Vok robots on back someday they are such great characters i really just love to see them come back for for the modern series Robots of death is a fantastic story it's probably like the most viewed story from this season season that's why i love it then we got challenge of wing chiang fantastic final to to a fantastic season i love how it's set in 19th century england I just love the Chinese mob, the fourth doctor doing his kung fu moves, like like act, dressing up a bit like a Sherlock's home character. You could and when he did those kung fu moves against the Chinese mob, he it gave me such a bit of the the Pertwee era feeling to it. So yeah. And the giant rat really terrified me, like how it grabbed Leela's leg. And then you also have uh, Mr. Sins who is a I find that guy really creepy. He acted like... He sort of reminded me of Chucky from Child's Play a bit. Really terrifying little puppet-like cr- puppet. How he had, goes around killing people. It just reminded me of Child, reminded me of Chucky from Child's Play. So, yeah. Chun's Wing Chang is a fantastic season 14 final. And overall, I really love season 14. It's a fantastic season and probably like the, the best season of the classic series ever. And uh, I consider it, like, the peak for the classic series. 
of all time. And Tom Blake is acting patrol in that season. Is really spot on there. I can think that his acting patrol in that season was really at peak at there. As, and honestly, season 14, in my opinion, was like the peak for the original series. This is where the original series was at peak. And, and that's why I really love season 14. And that's why I consider it as Tom Baker's best season. And so, yeah. So, overall, that's my rankings on the Tom Baker era of the show. I shall see you later on for the Peter Davison era of the show. Later now, this is Duke Kadoff. Dave, signing off. Bye.